Welcome fellow phoenixes to the Spiritual Phoenix Podcast, where we make a daily offering to the divine by putting our past on the pyre, searching the smoke for spirituality, turning the ashes into art, adapting isolation into connection, and manifesting mental wellness. I'm your host, Ross Cessna, and I'd like to take a moment and uh, focus on what we're grateful for today. Today, I'm uh, just grateful to uh, be able to have some of the um, hobbies that I do. My hobbies have been so beneficial in my recovery from addiction and mental illness. Um, I wouldn't be where I'm at without writing music, art, um, all of those things. And today's topic is about depression, but I'd like to get into a couple quotes and then get into a wordplay Wednesday as well. The first quote is, he who thinks he can, can, and he can't who thinks he can't. This is an inexorable, indisputable law. And that was said by Pablo Picasso. I am not now that which I have been. And that was said by Lord Byron. And the words for uh, Wordplay Wednesday would be, the first one is inspire. And you can look at that as to in inwardly create aspire. And if you don't know what aspire is, aspire is described as a tapering conical or pyramidal structure on the top of a building, typically a church tower. So effectively, when you are inspired or you're inspiring somebody, you're raising an elevated state of spirit inside yourself or another. Um, and the next one is desire. This can be viewed the following way. D typically means lower, down to the bottom of, or uh, similar things, off of. And the word sire is typically a higher member of society. When we lack control of our desires, we are effectively lowering our rank in society or unsiring ourselves or lowering ourselves. Um, today's topic may be upsetting to some, so let me preface this by saying the following. Everything I state on this podcast is opinion from my personal experience. What works for me will not unilaterally work for everyone, as not everyone's approach works for me. If this doesn't work for you, it doesn't make you less than, not good enough, not smart enough, or any of those things. It just means it's not your path. I had experienced many substantial moments of depression in my life. I was first taken to a doctor for depression the summer going into or the summer after my freshman year of high school. I was diagnosed as bipolar back then, but the meds they gave me made me feel funny, so I stopped taking them. I then started to use drugs, alcohol being one of them, to self-medicate myself for the misery I felt from not being comfortable in my own skin, not being good enough, not being smart enough, not being enough in general. I found a group of friends who accepted me as damaged as I was because they themselves were damaged too. Eventually, all my associations were people I drank or smoked with. I eventually thought I found solace for my depression in my first substantial romantic relationship, but the toxicity of it caused me to further slide down the road of self-medicating. I thought a change in scenery would change my emotional composition, and it did for a time. But then the depression was back. No matter where I ran, it was there suffocating any happiness. And I fed into the cycle by isolation, apathy, and drugs. This path further separated me from happiness. It took me being psychotic the better part of a year to really seek outside help. Even then, it took me two more years to get into recovery and, and, and get clean. When I started my recovery from... Uh, Drugs, alcohol being one of them, in September, I was shy, timid, frightened, lonely, and broken. When I finally resolved to quit using drugs, alcohol being one of them, it was because of a seemingly inexhaustible feeling of remorse for seeing the same behavior I had exhibited as a child 
playing out in my current actions as a 32 year old man, I decided I had to make a change that I couldn't continue to live as I had been. Around this time, I had the physical sensation of the hemispheres of my brain turning like a cog and shifting 180 degrees, like I had been looking at everything wrong. Granted, I know my brain didn't quote unquote spin around and that it may sound ridiculous to many, but I had the physical sensation of this. Shortly after this is when I really became committed to living differently. I started my blog, I started exercising, I was doing volunteer work for the local NAMI affiliate. I had some social interaction with people uh, in similar situations. I meditated, I did yoga, I walked my dog, I painted, I colored, I cooked dinner, I played the guitar, I recorded hip hop. I started listening to the Positive Head podcast. I uh, practiced mindfulness a lot too and mindfulness is key for overcoming mental illness and addiction. I didn't allow myself to be depressed even though I was going through a situation that would normally have had me blackout drunk and stoned out of my mind. I understand depression. I understand not wanting to be around others. I understand having no energy. I understand not wanting to leave bed. I understand not showering for several days. I understand feeling dead inside. However, Today I understand recovery. It took me 16 years to actually understand recovery. I started uh, my first rehabilitation program it's almost 16 years ago to, to this date. I, my first experience in rehabilitation was in December uh, when I was 16 years old. So I, I finally get it now and I had been in and out of the rooms since then. I understand simply taking medicine for depression isn't enough. I understand simply going to a therapist isn't enough. It takes a lot of work and energy outside of those things to recover. And I am liable to regress at any time. That is why I actively pursue my recovery every day because I know that when I don't, that limitless abyss of pain is waiting there, deeper, darker, and colder. Recovery takes a lot of work. But you know what is a lot more work? Hating myself, wanting to die, not wanting to eat, not loving anything that mattered, giving up on life. I realize not everyone will think it is that simple. I can tell you it's not that simple. I had been stuck in this small boxed in world of comfortable pain, self-loathing, isolation and misery for so long. It was like walking outside in the winter without a coat. After a while, you adapt to the cold as your body freezes and suffers from frostbite. Being depressed is an extreme amount of subconscious work that expends limitless energy you can use to feel better. Depression had me cornered and it was either it kills me or I, or I fight back. That was depression's mistake. Today, depression has an enemy that is fighting for his life. See, if my emotions get all mixed up, that means I'm more likely to use drugs. And if I use drugs, it's all downhill. They say addicts have three places to go, jails, institutions, and death. I have been to the first two, and I'm not ready for the last. See, many people think addiction is just about using drugs. It's not. It's about so much more. Much of it mental, social, spiritual, and physical. I was addicted to my emotions. Reacting to the anger, depression, sadness in unhealthy ways long before I picked up a drink or other drug. I, blindly, I was blindly addicted to misery because I would try and resolve, my similar, resolve similar problems expecting different results and they would end up the same. My poor emotional and mental regulation was my problem and drugs were once the solution. Now they are part of the problem. You see, my thinking is my biggest problem. I am my own worst enemy if I choose to be. Today, I choose to be my best friend. Today, my solution is recovery. I am careful how I word things when I'm thinking clearly. I don't want to label myself as my diagnosis. That is part of the problem. I can't be naive enough to think I am cured of my illnesses either. I was diagnosed bipolar 1, schizoaffective with borderline personality disorder. I treat myself for those condi conditions and I will continue to do so. 
They have suggested to take me off medicine because my current doctor thinks most of my issues were drug-induced psychosis, which is more manageable if I don't do drugs. I don't live in a horror show. If I can recover from my previous mental state, you can as well. I feel that one of the major barriers people have to overcome is the label of a diagnosis because it allows them to defend their negative personality traits with disease. They can write off how they, how they feel, think, and act as just a symptom, and I admittedly fall into that trap sometimes myself. I will close with this. If you aren't depressed in that exact moment, don't say I suffer from depression. If you don't have anxiety in that moment, don't say I have anxiety issues. If, if you have anger issues, don't address it as such. If you've had anger issues in the past, I should say. You are unconsciously programming your subconscious to give you more of what you speak. I am not bipolar. I am not schizoaffective. I am not borderline personality disorder. I am not depression. I may have symptoms of those conditions at times, but those conditions don't define me in this moment or most of the time. Um, there was something that Brandon Beecham from the Positive Head podcast uh, said in response to one of my uh, emails at one point. And he said... Uh, it's time, let's start telling new stories. Maybe you had a bad moment or moments. Um, who hasn't? Who hasn't had mentally unhealthy times in their life? And I'm paraphrasing the rest of it now. Now it's time for you to be mentally healthy. And, and you see, that's what, what I am today. I work on it daily. Those symptoms of those illnesses may pop up, but just because there's a symptom of it doesn't mean I have it. If you have a cough, it doesn't mean you have the flu. Some of those things that occur in those diagnoses are just in and of itself what they are. They don't have to be part of a condition. This generalizing and label making of everything can be somewhat nefarious. Granted, as I stated earlier, I'm going to treat myself for those conditions regardless because it helps me. And with that, I, uh, I'm going to put this episode on the pyre. If you would like to be a guest on the show, you can contact me via Facebook Messenger. Ideal guests will have had a major life obstacle they are overcoming or have overcome and will have an inspirational, life-changing philosophy, spiritual awakening, or insight of lived experience to share. I do free tarot read readings occasionally, and I'm building up a database so you can select a reading at random choice or read the most recent reading. A link will be in the des description below. Also, if you would like to get paid to write, click the link below. All you have to do is to be able to write five sentences in English. The links to all my social media accounts will be in the top right of the page on YouTube, on iTunes or SoundCloud. They'll be in the, in the description as well as on the main pages. And there will also be uh, links listed in the episode descriptions as well as on my uh, web page. Please leave a review on iTunes if you like the podcast as it will help me reach new listeners. And also, please take the time to respond to the PodTrack listener survey as it'll help me understand my audience. And with that, um, I love, appreciate, and respect all of you. Love and light. Namaste.